investigate. In 2007, Miami-Dade County launched their fireboat program amid great fanfare, declaring it a vital service. And with more than 50,000 boats registered here and miles upon miles of inland waterways, who could argue with it? But today, the county's fireboat program is dead in the water. As CBS4 investigator Jim DeFeedy reports, the decision may save money, but at what cost? Miami's appeal has always been in the water, offering a playground like few others. The recent Columbus Day weekend brought out hundreds of boats filled with revelers in all shapes and sizes looking for a good time. But in an instant, these adventures can turn deadly. And who is there to help? And so it was on Labor Day weekend, 2012. I remember being in the water with my friends and my boyfriend and Josh waving at me and I took a picture of him. Dana and her brother Josh were just off Hollover Beach, enjoying the day on a friend's boat. It's crazy because 10 minutes later, that was it. Josh Schwabenbauer, an off-duty Lauder Hill firefighter, broke his neck on the ocean floor. The ensuing chaos captured by a reality TV crew who happened to be in the water that day. The clock was ticking and no one was there to help. An off-duty paramedic rendered CPR and eventually got Josh to shore. Three days later, he was pronounced dead. I feel like I've lost my, my future. Josh Schwabenbauer is one of at least 17 people who have died in Miami-Dade waters since the county pulled their fireboats out of service for budget reasons two years ago. I probably deserved a fair chance at living. He didn't get it. Maybe they could have gotten him breathing and he would not have been brain dead. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad that no one was there. So where was the fireboat on that Labor Day weekend? The same place it is today. Tied to a dock in the port of Miami. Jack Garcia and Mike Parker both served on the fireboat before the program was abandoned. When people die on the water, nobody cares. A plane crash off Turkey Point elicited this exchange. <laughs> and a cabin fire aboard a boat off Madison Hammock prompted this transmission. The fire uh, boat does get her to put it out. It's going to sink by word of while Coast Guard and police vessels patrol the waters, none of them are equipped to fight fires, and none of them are staffed with paramedics and divers. Any doubts about the value of the fireboat were laid to rest in March 2008, when two teenagers were trapped below deck of a burning boat in the Miami Beach Marina. The fireboat crew managed to cut a hole in the side of the boat to get them out. Any doubt in your mind that without the fireboat they would have died? No, no doubt at all. No doubt at all. In May, a family of five had to abandon ship when smoke filled the cabin of their cruiser. Without the fireboat, a private towboat grabbed the burning ship's anchor and dragged the burning vessel to the broad causeway so fire trucks on the bridge could spray water on it. A heart attack aboard a dive boat prompted the Coast Guard to see where the fireboat was. The dispatcher made up the engine problem rather than explain they weren't allowed to send the boat anymore. Dave Downey has been with the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Department for 26 years and was picked by Mayor Carlos Jimenez to lead the department last February. Right now, quite frankly, I don't have the money available to put this unit in service. It costs about $2.5 million a year to operate and staff the boat year-round about the same cost as running one fire truck. They were running calls and they were providing a service, yes. Do you have any doubt that they were saving lives? No doubt at all. Do you have any doubt that since the fireboat has been taken out of service, that people have died who might have been saved otherwise? It would be speculation. I don't, I don't have any direct knowledge of anything. I asked Chief Downey about the death of Josh Schwabenbauer. I agree with you. I, I can't tell you whether it would have changed the outcome of this, this tragedy. But the fact of the matter is we didn't have the resource and service. If somebody out there needs help, they're not going to get it and they're going to die. And it's not going to be brought up and they're just going to say, well, they would have died anyway or we don't have that service. Something's got to be done, man. This is, this is crazy. This is infuriating to know that that equipment is bought and paid for and fueled up and simply just sits there tied or in dry dock. It's disgraceful. Jim's here now. We just had an election yesterday, many of them around our area yeah. in the country. Was anybody even talking about this issue? No, this is a county issue. So there was no county one on the county ballot. But this is one of those things where the fire department claims that they just can't have the financial resources. They're worried they're going to have to lay firefighters off very soon because of their budget constraints. And they say they need to improve response times on land. And yet, there is nothing on the water when people get in trouble. Any chance that this
the fire boats will be back in service anytime soon? or They could be back in service tomorrow. All it takes is somebody saying, put them in service, because those boats are sitting gassed and ready. They just don't have a crew assigned to them. Assign them a crew. They could be working right now. All right. We're glad you brought the attention to this, Jim. Thank you, Jim. We'll be right back.